So please put your hands together for BTC Sessions. All right. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks. Um, thank you for having me. And I do want to say a big thank you uh, to the organizers of BTC Prague for having me back and putting educational material, actionable educational material on the main stage. Um, so let's give a round of applause to uh, the organizers here. Awesome. Uh, and for everybody watching, this presentation comes with homework. So at the very end of this presentation, please have your phones handy. There will be a QR code on the screens at the end. And scanning that QR code will take you to a full playlist of in-depth tutorials on everything I talk about today. All right? So just be prepared. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, this is a chat about UTXO consolidation and dealing with Bitcoin in a high fee environment. Um, Bitcoin fees, as of late, have been quite erratic, very unpredictable. And I'm certain that some of you have run into instances where you've been unprepared and been stuck needing to do some transactions when fees are really, really high. And that's not a good feeling to have. So we're going to be discussing the tools that we have at our disposal right now, not something that might work eventually, but what do we have right now to deal with this? We're gonna be chatting a little bit about how you prepare for high fees, things that you can be doing when fees are low. Uh, we're gonna be talking about tools that you can use if you did not prepare, but you still need to transact. So we're gonna go through UTXO consolidation, self-custodial lightning, liquid, fediments, cashew, and beyond. So let's start with what the hell is a UTXO? There's, uh, I'm sure there's some curious people uh, that are unfamiliar with the idea. The long and the short of it is a lot of us are very used to looking at a bank account and simply seeing a balance. But that is not functionally how Bitcoin works. It's more like having physical cash. And what I mean is, if somebody sends you some Bitcoin, maybe they send you 5 million sats, and then somebody else sends you 1 million sats, and then somebody else sends you 10 million sats. If somebody gives you physical bills, maybe 100 and a 50 and a 20, you can go into your physical wallet afterwards, open it up, and you can see the individual bills. You can actually see the pieces of currency that you received. And Bitcoin functions this way. You can go into your wallet, if you have a wallet that shows that much detail, and you can see the chunks of Bitcoin sitting in your wallet. A couple examples of this. On the left, that is Sparrow Wallet. On the right, that is Nunchuck Wallet. These are just a couple wallets that give you that insight, that uh, deeper look into what's going on behind the scenes. You can see a list of UTXOs in the UTXO section over in Sparrow. And on the right, if you go into the coin section of Nunchuck, you can actually see the chunks of Bitcoin sitting in your wallet. And you can selectively spend them if you like or label them based on where they've come from, all kinds of stuff. So let's chat a little bit about how fees work with Bitcoin. They actually have nothing to do with the amount of money you're spending. There's no percentage fee that you're paying. It's actually to do with, number one, how busy is the network? How many people are trying to actually use the network for on-chain transactions at that time? And number two, how much data are you using? How much data does your transaction take up at that time? And then obviously, how important is it to you? How much of a fee do you want to attach? How urgent is the transaction? So you cannot control what other people are doing. You cannot control the network traffic. But you can control your data usage. You have control over how much data your transactions take up. Or you can prepare for that. And so you can do things like using certain address types 
if you're using SegWit addresses or Tapper addresses that start with BC1, those use less data when you go to spend later. If you've got older addresses, ones that start with three or one, then those are gonna take up more data when you go to spend. Also, and the big part of it, is how many UTXOs are you spending? We just chatted about how your Bitcoin wallet is more like a physical wallet with cash. And each one of those bills that is sitting in your wallet is a little bit of data. And so if you're using a lot of bills in a transaction, then it can be expensive. You can think of it like this. If you're gonna spend $100, imagine if every bill that you're spending has a tiny fee attached to it. It is a lot more efficient to spend a $100 bill than a hundred $1 bills. So how do you deal with it when you do have a hundred $1 bills or a, a bunch of small chunks of Bitcoin? This is where Bitcoin differs from cash because you can actually combine bills when fees are low so that you have less bills but larger bills for when fees are high. And this is really simple. You can think of it kind of like melting down a bunch of gold coins into a big gold bar. And when you do that, next time you go to spend and if fees are high, you've only got one bill. So there is only one little piece of data there instead of a bunch of pieces of data. So how do you actually consolidate your UTXOs? It's really simple. You can just send your balance to your own address in the exact same wallet. And different wallets have different ways of representing this. If it doesn't show anything about your UTXOs, you can really just hit the receive screen, copy your address, go to the send screen, and send all of your money to yourself. In other wallets like Sparrow, it actually has a convenient little drop-down option and it grabs an address for you. I will link to a tutorial on how to do that at the end. But that's the general premise. Now, this doesn't come without trade-offs. You need to be aware of the privacy trade-offs in doing this. Because when you spend Bitcoin on chain, the merchant doesn't just see the amount that you've paid them, they see the change. That's fine if you walk into a corner store and you go to buy a candy bar and you give you know, a 50 euro note and you get back some change, not a big deal. But if you go to buy a t-shirt online and you use a UTXO that's worth a million dollars, all of a sudden that merchant is now mailing you a t-shirt to your physical address. They know where you live and they just saw that million dollars in change that returned to you that may be worth a plane ticket for them and an investment in a $5 wrench. So be aware, don't make your UTXOs too large if you plan on doing on-chain expenditures at random merchants. Okay, so we, we talked about on-chain preparations, but let's talk about off-chain fee solutions, different types of wallets you can use. And I'm gonna start from the most self-sovereign full self-custody solutions, and then we're gonna work our way to what if you didn't prepare, what options and tools do you have, and what are the trade-offs? So, if you're going hard in the self-custody realm, I quite like Phoenix and Zeus. These are full self-custody mobile lightning wallets. There's a node running on your phone. They have automated lightning channels, you have a regular seed to back up, so you've got your 12 or 24 words, easy recovery. And they also have options to buy inbound channels. So for Phoenix, as the example, which is one that I use quite a bit, there's a little button at the top that says request inbound liquidity. And what that does is you can pay a small fee to have Async, who runs Phoenix, open up a big lightning channel for you and then every time you receive, you just have that channel already. You don't need to worry about on-chain fees every single receive or bumping into that. Um, now, some trade-offs here. Of course, as I just said, there's fees funding for the first time. So uh, if you don't already have a channel and you go to use these and the fees are currently high, it will be expensive to get started. Um, 
Phoenix does not yet have a lightning address, meaning a little email address that looks like uh, that you can use for receiving transactions. Zeus does. I think it's getting better over time. Um, and also, I find that Zeus's startup is a little bit slower just due to how it works in the back end, but still great options for full self-custody on Lightning. Now, this is where we're getting into some trade-offs, but also great for easy onboarding that gives you a path to full self-custody. I am a huge fan of what Mutiny Wallet is doing and their approach to Lightning to make onboarding easy for brand newcomers, to allow them to see transactions quickly for small amounts without needing Lightning channels, but to give them a way to get to full self-custody in the same app, not saying, oh, use this, it's custodial, but then later you're gonna download a different app and we're gonna move it. No, this is all one ecosystem. So what they've done is, in the background on Mutiny Wallet, they are using Fediments, and I know a number of people in here will not be fully familiar with how this works, but you can think of it as community funds. It's like a, it's a community bank. It is custody. Make no qualms about that. It is, it is custodied, but it's distributed in a way where it's a big multi-sig, and you can have a community, and you can vet the key holders, or vet the mint is what it would be called. Um, and what it allows you to do is initially, you can join a Mint just in the interface there, and you, if you plug in your Nostra account, it'll actually even show other Nostra contacts you have that have vetted the Mint. You can join the Mint, and at that point, you can instantly begin receiving Lightning transactions with no fees, just regular Lightning fees. And so, for me, when I'm onboarding somebody new, this might be a good option because I can send them $2.00, and they're not gonna have to get a lightning channel. But I can also say, hey, when you build a bigger balance, if you got a million sats sitting here, hit this button, which is the two little arrows crisscrossing by the 135,000 sats, I can say, hit that button. What that's gonna do is it's going to allow you to withdraw from the community bank and take all your money into full self-custody. It will create a lightning channel for you with your funds in it. So you're moving from the Fediment to self-custodial Lightning in the same app when it's economically viable to do so. Now, um, again, the Nostra integration with this is really great. The big trade-off here, it comes at the beginning if you're using the Fediment option because trust is involved, okay? Moving on. There we go. Uh, this is another option when it comes to not having to deal with on-chain fees. If you haven't prepared, if you're okay with uh, you know, some trade-offs or a day-to-day -day spending wallet, Aqua Wallet has done something interesting where they have kind of a hybrid approach that uses or gives you the ability to do both lightning transactions and liquid network transactions in one interface. And so they have the ability to receive on-chain they have the ability to receive lightning payments. They have the ability to receive liquid payments, both of which are under the umbrella of your spending accounts. And they also have the ability to swap from your spending accounts to your savings accounts, or from liquid to on-chain. And the way that this is working in the back end is when you hit receive and you create a lightning invoice, it's actually using a service called Bolts to swap from Lightning to Liquid. And so you're actually holding Liquid Bitcoin in the background. The reason that this might be convenient for you is, again, you do not need to set up any Lightning channels. There's nothing to do with that. It just swaps into Liquid right away. That's all dealt with on the back end. You don't need to understand any of it. You will just be holding Liquid Bitcoin, but you can spend it as a Lightning transaction if you like. Now. Again, the trade-offs here, trust is involved. Same kind of idea. There's a liquid federation. It's a big multi-sig. It's a pool of funds. You can peg into or out of it. But when it's sitting there, it is custodial. It's just not as bad as a singular custodian, like sitting in on an exchange, OK? Um, and the other thing that I would like to see out of Aqua Wallet is an auto swap function. And what I mean is, what if I want to receive an on-chain transaction but I want to instantly have it go into my spending account. 
that's not there yet. It is possible. It is coming. But um, for now, you need to deposit on chain and then do another transaction by hitting the swap button. So look out for that when it does come. Now, this is another interesting one. I'm running down on last few minutes here, but Fediments, um, namely the Fedi app or Fedi Bravo in the, the app store right now. Um, no on-chain fees to start receiving immediately because it is a Fediment, same thing that Mutiny is using. Um, you know, you've got some good privacy there. You have the ability to do offline payments. So you can actually pay somebody to their Fedi app even if they don't have internet connectivity. Um, you also have integrated native apps. And what I mean is you can have your wallet and then below it, natively in the app, you could have things like BitRefill or BTC Maps or whatever local meetup you're a part of. All of those things can be put together in a, in a community setting and they could be just default on, on your particular app. So you can customize this to do whatever you like with it. It's really cool. Again, the trade-off being there's trust involved and uh, part of the trade-off also is how do you choose and trust a mint? Um, BitcoinMints.com is a cool new website where they're starting to list and, and, uh, and rate some of the mints. So that may be a tool to use over time. And the last thing I want to touch on here is uh, Cashew. So this is another, what's known as an eCash protocol on top of Bitcoin, specifically on top of Lightning. It is more centralized than something like a Fediment or Liquid because it's just somebody's Lightning node, all right? So there is risk there. So I wouldn't be parking much money in something like this, but maybe for a day-to-day tiny transaction, you're spending a few bucks at a time, something that's not going to break the bank if something goes awry. Um, but no on-chain fees to start. You have great privacy. It is interoperable with any other Lightning wallet. A lot of these have Nostr integration, so you can start zapping and sending with your, uh, with your friends or using your Cashew wallet to receive uh, your social zaps on Nostr. Um, and again, the trade-off, there's trust involved. It is more centralized than some of these other mints that we're talking about. Um, and again, how do you choose and trust a mint, which BitcoinMints.com can help with this. And so now's the time that you would be pulling out your phones and scanning that QR code. This will lead you to a full video playlist on everything we covered. It will teach you how to consolidate your UTXOs. It will teach you how to use Basically, every app here, Phoenix, uh, Mutiny, Aqua, all of that is in there, including all the cashew stuff. And my homework for you is go check this out. Make sure that when fees do drop low, you prepare yourself with your UTXOs and, um, and start experimenting with some of these options in terms of day-to-day -day spending wallets so that when high fees do hit, you barely notice because you were prepared. I'll finish that there. Thank you guys very much. Have a wonderful end of the conference.